very much, Alison, and thanks everyone. It's great to be here and great to see such a full room. So I think you know this mess, this this topic is, is really important. It really is under you know it holds us all up in one sense in what we do and what we want to see and what we aspire to see. Um, I've actually not long before I came here was in the um, there was a dull debate on the nature restoration law, um, sort of from an agricultural perspective. So I was in there with my uh, two other ministerial colleagues on it, and you know. We did an opening statement, we listened to all the statements, and then there was a closing statement. But I think it's a good example of um, something that's topical now, something that's current, something that, you know, the default line is the Greens, we really want the nature restoration law, um, environmentalists really want it. Uh, farmers are like, absolutely, we're not sure because we don't know what it means. Um, but we still really want it, even though we don't even know how it's going to be implemented on the ground. Because it's not been decided yet. The information isn't there. So potentially you have this situation, and it's certainly few fired up in the last couple of weeks, where you have um, the debate is so polarised, and this is usually where we end up in this polarised debate. Um, and when the debate is polarised and you have environmentalists versus farmers in this example, nothing moves forward. And that, that's the thing that gets me, is that we have to try and keep things sort of centred. We have to keep sort of the reasonable people, if you can, if you can control that, discussing these issues. Um, with all due respect to any media people here, like the best, you know, everyone loves the, the Tim Cullinan versus, um, um, give me a name, John Gibbons, you know, because it's there. Sorry, John, if he's here, but you know, Tim isn't here, I'm sure. But I mean, the thing is that you know, it's great for it's great, it's great for them. He might be, you know, it's great for the it's great for the media, a bit of a laugh, you know. But it, it's not progressive. It doesn't bring us on. And ultimately, if we're all genuinely here, we need to be able to communicate to people that we we want this for the best. It's not so we can tell you what to do or you know uh, dictate what you're going to do in your future life. It's because we believe and we all in our hearts believe this is the right approach to take. This is where we want to see our country and our world and Europe move towards. And where we want to see it, uh, you know, there's probably no end in that. There's always something to be improved. Um, sometimes isn't where other people want to be. There's a certain percentage of the population who are happy to embrace this and happy to engage with what's happening and happy to try out new things and happy to maybe farm in a different way, happy to take public transport you name it, happy to retrofit their homes. And there's a whole swathe of the population that thinks, well, no, I don't want to do that. Why should I do that? I can't afford to do that. It's going to affect my livelihood. Um, and I think therein is where we struggle maybe sometimes with the communications because we really want things to be right in a very genuine, unselfish way. I think we want it to be right for everyone. Um, so I, I think that's the challenge, how we, how we make that difference. I think Caroline could have mentioned about the, and there is a difference between the public sphere and the political sphere, and I've sort of learned that in my short time in politics. Um, I mean, take something, for example, like um, something close to our hearts as a party, like hair coursing. I mean, the vast majority of the public don't like that. You know, if you do the, the you know, all the surveys show, you know, 78%, some figure like that. Yet, that is not the case in the political world. We don't have commitment to, to look at that. That's just not happening. So we have to be conscientious, I suppose, of the difference between the public and the, the politics, even though the politics is ultimately meant to represent what we believe the public feels. It doesn't always happen like that. And I think also from a political point of view, I mean, that oft used phrase, politics is the art of the possible. And the other one is that, you know, let's not let perfection be the enemy of the good. I, I think that's just so important and I, I just find that even despite we might make the massive strides we want to make, some strides in the right direction for me are better than none at all or, or pulling back you know, or, or reversing out of that and in a sense that was why it was so important for me. You know, I, I, I pushed hard for us to go into government and I, I, I'm glad we did. I think, I think most people who supported us to go into government will be happy with what we've achieved in government. But we've still so many things to do, so much to do, so much to achieve. Um, I've just one little example I give from my own area, because I do live in County Offaly, very much rural area, um, surrounded by bogs, surrounded by farms. I am a farmer myself, and that helps me in my communications to, to other farmers and to that sector, because uh, straight away I'm at a level. It's very hard to try and you know, get to that level and then come with some more. But um, there's a little village close to me, well, maybe it's half an hour away, called Pulla. 
which I think means hole in Irish, if any Irish speakers, because it literally is in the middle of the bog. Um, and I was there recently for a, an event where they were high, showcasing their small community and all the things they do. And everything, and I wouldn't say there'd be a green voter in the village, if you like, you know, it's just that very conservative, awfully type place. Everything they did smacked of green, maybe with a small g. You know, they were community orientated. They were bringing, you know, biodiversity into the schools and the preschool. They were looking at um, upcycling. They'd upcycled all their Christmas decorations. They found them in the back of a shed from 20 years ago and rewired them. And that was their Christmas decorations that year. You know, they're probably doing things like water harvesting. They're on the Greenway, like, and they love the Greenway and they see what it has brought to their village. They have a community shop, you know, voluntary run. They fundraise from the local community to keep this little shop going. They treasure their, 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 their industrial heritage and their natural heritage. And, you know, I was so in awe of it. Like, they're doing it already. I mean, if every village did what they did in rural Ireland, we'd be a huge long way down, down the, the track of where we want to get. But I still felt sort of external to them. Like, I was, oh yeah, you're the Green Party, but we're actually quite green-minded. So that's an important thing from a, from a political sense, to make that connection, to connect us with the things people are already doing. You know, they were establishing a sustainable energy community. I mean, everything was ticking all the boxes. So um, I, think, I think, yeah, I think for me, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of the good, but you still have to keep trying, you still have to keep pushing. But the communications is really important. We do want every, we do want the world to be better. We want people to live better lives. Um, but you do have to help them do that. So going back to the nature restoration law where I started and I'll finish on this. The sense, I think, and, and look, at it, of, of course, once there's any fear element, you, you're on the back foot because you're always explaining, oh, don't worry about that, don't worry about this. Um, I mean, fear is probably the easiest emotion to, to um, you know, get people motivated. And, and, and we try it as well with the, with the, you know, ice caps are melting, world's going to burn up in a couple of years. Um, but bring it back to the, as local as you can to people. I think that works because people can relate to that. People can get together. And you need, there is a, one final expression is, um, there's nothing as uh, powerful as a community coming together, working together for a common cause. So if, if you build that community spirit, small at first, and make that bigger, then you're maybe halfway there in the comms. But I'll leave it at that for now, but happy to take questions later.